Hi there, dear listener. Lazlo here with a quick pre-roll message for you. Before we get started, I want to let you know there are all kinds of convenient ways for you to support my efforts to bring you all these podcast shows on Chinese history, Chinese sayings, and tea history. If you go to my website at teacup.media and click the support button at the top, you'll find a bunch of ways to show some appreciation. There's Patreon, where you can get early access to new episodes, exclusive content, and an invite to the Teacup Media Discord channel, and more. CHP Premium, that also has early access, exclusive episodes, and ad-free versions of the entire CHP back catalog. Plus, there's several other ways to donate to the show as well. Check the episode show notes for a link to that very page. And my deepest thanks for listening and supporting me and my humble efforts. Hi everyone, Laszlo Montgomery back again with another Chinese saying for your repertoire. Thanks for giving the Chinese sayings podcast another shot. This saying today is even older than last episodes. This time we're traveling back in history to more than 23 centuries ago, to the year 316 BCE. In the West, while our story is taking place, classical Greek civilization is at its peak and Alexander the Great had perished only seven years prior at the palace of Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. And in China, well, still no unified country exists yet called China, there's only a collection of warring states trying to annihilate each other so that one could emerge victorious as ruler of the land. At 316 BCE, when this story takes place, still hadn't been done. 4th century BCE, before the Common Era. All the dates I'm mentioning in this episode will be BCE. Our Chinese saying, our Chengyu, for today, goes back to the time of King Huiwen of Qin. He was the ancestor of the Qin Emperor who unified China and built that amazing mausoleum in Xi'an with all its terracotta warriors and horses. Our story behind this Chengyu comes straight from the China History Podcast, Episode 158, The Rise and Fall of the Qin, Part 2. CHP listeners might remember the Shenyo Dao, the stone cattle road that cut through the Qinling Mountains that separated Shanxi and Sichuan provinces. Yeah, today's story looks at the not-too-bright ruler down in the ancient state of Shu, who, thanks to his short-sightedness, goes down in Chinese history as the man who gave us a staple among popular Changyu, Tan Xiao Shi Da. Allow me to explain how that one works. Four characters. Tan means to covet or be greedy for something. Xiao means small. So Tan Xiao means you're greedy for small things. Shi means to lose, and Da means great or big. Shi Da, to lose big. Tan Xiao, Shi Da. Because you're greedy for the small thing, you end up losing the big thing. This is one of those sayings where you might be able to figure out the meaning of the Cheng Yu just by translating the individual characters. But the backstory to this one is particularly good, so let's see what it is. If you're familiar with the Qin State, or you've already listened to the China History Podcast series on the rise and fall of the Qin, you'll recall they had a lot of big ideas about conquering the various kingdoms to their east. But before they went after those big strong guys, they had their eyes on lesser states that they believe should be taken first in order to enhance their army bring additional wealth into the Qin state to fortify it and allow them to bulk up enough to go on and take those other more powerful states. So King Hui Wen and his advisors agreed they had to start with these two kingdoms to the south, Ba and Shu, down where Sichuan is today. Now this is just a legend. One of King Hui Wen's advisors had told him they should create a ruse that took advantage of the Shu ruler's well-known avaricious ways. He had a soft spot for gold, silver, and other kinds of tangible treasure. And just as an aside, this land of Ba and Shu was the location of the mysterious and ancient Sanxingdui and Jinsha cultures. 
This was all around the capital city of Chengdu, and Ba State was more to the east, where Chongqing is today. The Qin had sent out an exploratory mission to see how they could get a big enough army down there to take this kingdom down. What they found was that the Qinling Mountains presented too big an obstacle for marching an army through to the south. It was passable by individuals on foot, but eh, for the kind of military plans they had in mind, it wasn't feasible. So someone came up with the idea to create these carved stone cattle, five of them in all, and they filled the extremities of these animals with pieces of gold, and they knew the ruler in that part of China that we know as Sichuan province today wouldn't be able to resist such a gift. And they sent someone down to Shu on a goodwill mission, by all appearances, with a list of all these valuable gifts the Qin ruler wanted to present to the king, or actually his his title was the Marquis of Shu. So this ruler thereupon sent his own envoys up to Qin to go check out these gifts and what they saw just amazed them. These stone cattle, or shirnyo, that were actually filled with gold. Well, this Marquis of Shu had an advisor who had more wisdom and common sense than his boss. And this advisor warned his superior not to be fooled. He probably hadn't heard about the Trojans from about a century before, but this was the general idea of what he was telling the Shu ruler. He warned that these men of Qin were up to something, and their reputation as a fighting machine was already well known around town, and he told the king, don't accept this gift, and don't let them come down to Shu. You'll never be able to get rid of them. Well, this Marquis of Shu fulminated over the benefits and risks, and decided to ignore his wise minister, and went ahead and gave instructions to invite these Qin ambassadors down to Shu to present their gifts. Well, the Qin ambassador told the Shu ruler's people that a road was going to need to be built in order to facilitate convenient transport of these stone cattle through the Qinling Mountains that separated Qin from Shu. The Shu ruler must have considered the building of this road a small price to pay, and at once he arranged for a sufficient number of workers to go and start quarrying enough limestone out of the hills to build a road that could facilitate easy transport of these big, heavy gifts through the mountains. And this road became known as the Shernyo Dao, the Stone Cattle Road. There may be bits and pieces of this road that still exist today. You can probably guess what happened. After the road was finished, and after the gifts had been presented, the Qin army later on just marched down all the way to present-day Chengdu and put an end to this Shu state in 316 BCE and the Ba state next door as well. And that spelled the end of Ba Shu and the whole incredible civilization, again, in what is today Sichuan province. So almost a hundred years after the Qin army put an end to the Ba Shu kingdoms, around 239 BCE, Liu Bu Wei, another Famous name from those times, also prominently mentioned in that China History Podcast episode on the rise and fall of the Qin, wrote this history of the times called the Liu Shi Chunqiu, the Spring and Autumn Annals of Master Liu. And it was Liu Bu Wei who remarked that this Shu ruler, because he coveted something as small and insignificant as a little gold, later on ended up losing his whole kingdom because he Tan Xiao coveted the small, he ended up Shi Da, losing the big. This is where Tan Xiao, Shi Da, comes from. And this Cheng Yu has been used for, and this Cheng Yu has been used for a couple thousand years since, whenever a similar situation arises where someone loses out big because they were too greedy for the small gain that came their way first. Tan Xiao, Shi Da. Don't lose sight of the big picture for the sake of a quick score. This is the Chinese version of our penny-wise and pound-foolish. Someone who watches the pennies they spend, but not the pounds. There's also a variation of this saying that goes, yin xiao shi da, substituting the word yin, which means because, instead of tan, which means to covet or be greedy for. Yin xiao shi da. 
because of the small, you lose the big. Same meaning. So that's the Cheng Yu for this time. Don't forget, there's more going on at Teacup Media than this Chinese Sayings podcast. For almost 300 hours of the greatest hits ever from Chinese history, go check out the China History Podcast. And while you're at it, pour yourself a cuppa and enjoy the Tea History Podcast. You won't regret that, I guarantee it. Until the next time, on behalf of the whole gang here at Teacup Media, management, the interns, hangers-on, and apple scruffs, this is Laszlo Montgomery signing off from an undisclosed location west of the San Andreas Fault here in Southern California. Think about joining me next time, won't you, for another interesting and useful episode of the Chinese Sayings Podcast.